Our next speaker is Andre Escobar, and he's the lead platform developer at i1 Digital. And he's going to talk with us about making a statement and using React.js to create content rich articles on WordPress. So please welcome Andre. Thank you. All right. Can everybody hear me? Good? All right, great. Um, so this is mostly really about our infrastructure and, and how we went about doing this, and especially with creative. So I'm going to start off here. Uh, so it's making a statement. Uh, it really is about, hey, can we customize, can we customize everything? Because that's what everybody really wants to do. Um, and a little bit more about me. Um, I'm at I1 Digital. I've been doing this for about five years, kind of self-taught. Um, New Jersey native, um, a proud dog dad. Uh, that's my little pup. Love him. Had to throw a dog in there. I think everybody was. Uh, uh, so this, a little outline um, that I'm going to go over is an intro to uh, who we are, um, our I1.3 framework, uh, which is what uh, we run our sites on, um, our category takeovers that we use to customize uh, categories and create uh, really cool experiences, um, really if they were within a specific category, especially for posts, it's, it's uh, kind of cool. And then how we ended up going from there into features and custom layout. So this is I1 Digital. Um, these are our major brands, uh, Caches we just launched, uh, Hello Beautiful, Unused One, and Global Grind. Um, we're really uh, one of the biggest um, African-American uh, owned and also the biggest network uh, within urban culture. Um, so we're part of a bigger uh, company that's called Urban One. Uh, so we operate about 70 to 80 sites total, uh, all running on WordPress VIP right now. Um, we do have some off offshoots that are not, um, but I'll focus mostly on, on these right here. Um, this is some of our reach. And I'll make sure to put this uh, everything in, in slides for you when I'm done. So a little bit about um, I, the I1.3 framework. Uh, so we do believe in the idea that one team can rule them all, which is complicated um, because customization also leads to complications, as we all know. Um, so a little bit about that. Uh, our, we have a custom CSS framework, which allows us to do this. Um, and, we, and we have that throughout our, our theme. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we do can be modular. Um, we also have a module loader uh, system within the framework, which allows us to actually work within vertical. Um, sorry, do parallel uh, developing for different features at the same time. So this is really good for agile um, in that sense. Uh, it's maintainable for that too because everything's kind of siloed within their specific modules that are really controlled by the admin. And I'm going to go over how that looks. Um, and it really powers 70, 70 sites on VIP here. So it's uh, pretty powerful. Um, so the CSS uh, framework, just a little bit about it. It's SaaS based, sensible. Uh, but the style sheets can be very different, which is really, really cool. Uh, so we we just launched this one, which is actually caches. Um, and as you can see here, uh, it it seems very like you know clear cut. Uh, we wanted to make sure we do some we did something clean. Uh, but these particular features right here uh, and these layouts all pertain only to the style sheet, but they're all running on the same framework. Uh, and the way we do that is by organizing our SAS to really compile that depending on what we want to do and use overrides. So it could look different than this, which is hella beautiful. So it's still similar in, in the sense that it's a uh, you know, grid style framework, but again, very customizable. And our other one, which is use one. Uh, and this one's really new centric, so there's a lot more content thrown at you. Uh, the i13 modules are what actually keeps us uh, organized. Uh, like I said before, uh, this is actually all um, we made it so it's activated by the admin. So each editor uh, could actually add certain features, um, such as the one I'm talking about today. Uh, so this is kind of how it looks. So it kind of looks like plugin in a sense. So we created our own way of loading these specific types of um, features within an event. So you could you know activate or deactivate uh, on demand. All right, so how it all started. It really started with uh, category takeovers. Um, and what we did here was uh, we did, we had these kind of category takeovers that actually create special and custom styling for pages um, that are categories uh, that also you can create your own layouts inside of them. So they, once you create a, a new category takeover, 
it also opens it up to having its own sidebars and its own widgets, its own uh, layout, um, its own ad tags too. Um, so that's really powerful, um, and it runs in the admin side as well. So most of our, we don't do any of this. Our creative teams do this. Um, so we train them on how, what buttons, you know, do what, or, or you know, how to break things. It, it, it works. Um, um, so more than more than anything, uh, what we've used this too is to leverage uh, really brands to. Uh, we sell we sell them a category takeover within the um, the actual site. So this this is really good for branded content um, and giving them the feel of like a, a specific uh, portion of the site is just made for you without having to do custom work all the time. So this is an example for again hello beautiful, but what we're able to do with category takeovers is actually create our own blog role here. This is all um, sponsored by the Home Depot. Um, so they. They can have you know any kind of ad slots that you like. Uh, we have a special video, and it also has its uh, own custom menu. So you can go into different sections within it. Um, and as long as the categories are tagged with the category that's being taken over, that styling actually goes into that category. So I'll show an example of that. Um, so this is News One again, and we did this for the University of Phoenix. Um, and so this is just another example of branded content that we were able to do within WordPress. So along with that, we could also do microsites. Uh, and we have a, a partner called uh, Black America Web that we actually do all their dev and they run on our framework. Um, so they have their own site, their own layout. Uh, again, they could, they're running their own ad tech um, as well. Um, so they have their own, if you can see the menus are very, it's actually very custom. But within there, uh, they, what they wanted to do, they owned a property that's called the DL Hughley Show. So what we did was we took over uh, this category and made it a section just for DL Hughley. And he actually has um, all his uh, content there sorted as well with a custom menu uh, and, again, a custom layout. So it could be very different or it could be as similar as you wanted to. Um, and this is it taking over. Uh, and as you can see here, this is an actual article uh, with custom sidebars as well. This is what the admin looks like. It's a lot. It's a little crazy. We're, we're trying to redo this, but um, at least you can see how you can select different categories and how each button does this. And the only way really that we're able to do this is because we are all running on the same framework. So when we ask for something to, um, for the container background, for the post to be a specific color, we have that targeted CSS already ready for it. So it's kind of similar on how like customizer works, um, and if you guys know, that it actually sends the CSS to the, to the top of the page, right? So we were able to leverage that, but just create it in, in an admin sec section for creative to do it. Um, and this is where the problem lies, I think. Um, well, we know it's a problem. But all these categories create all these special sidebars here. and if you've ever loaded a, a widget page, it could be a little crazy. So uh, we, we, we need a different way to really do this branded content as well as custom layout. So this is where I'm going to get into the features. So the features were really cool. We actually kind of started with, um, let me just go back real quick. When we build caches, we wanted to actually do something different. And at the moment, we were thinking of how can this stand out different than our website? Um, how can we, we do something, particularly that's not been done before? So we really started with this grid system here. And this is actually all, this got, still, uh, got built in React. And this is where we started to really figure out how to use React in, in the sense. So the framework is actually started here. But then we, we thought about how to use that somewhere else. And so the process here was uh, we, we had asked, which was create a new editorial tool to create long form content, posts, really, um, and allow editors to control layouts and styling depending. The challenges, um, well, we were thinking, oh, hey, we could probably maybe install a post builder uh, or a, a page builder. But on WordPress VIP, usually that is uh, not really easy access easily accessible. So we had to really think about 
how, how could we get around to doing that? The single, and we were also asked, can this be a single page app within the post? Which I'll get back to, we actually ended up doing something really cool there. Um, and the data structure. How do we save all this data within the post without creating a million custom, uh, custom meta, right? So, uh, and the biggest challenge, the branch deadline was in four weeks, so we had to get that done. Uh, so that was fun. Um, uh, so we started really by looking at like, okay, thinking in React. Uh, and the way you really want to see React is you want to start out with a special, a specific UI that you want to build. Uh, in this case, I'll go through exactly what we did. And then really break down the UI into different components and then create a static version. So that, that's the, the beginning process that we did. So I'll start off with the creative process here. We were, we, what we were requested was like, can we build this on a post. Um, so if you see here, you have like a cover, uh, which, we, which we ended up calling a hero image. We have a little blurb of content here. We have a quote stuff here. And then we have uh, images and, of course, an ad. So, you know, we got to make money. And then we went from there and started thinking, okay, that's our mock. Let's think of content mapping. So we figured within components, this is going to be one of the big components. So within there, you're like, okay, this has to be its own thing. So it needs its own data. This as well needs its own data. And of course, the ad tech needs its own data. And the blurb too, but I'm just kind of piecing it out so you get an idea of how we thought about it. And then once we, we figured out exactly what, what each one might be, we started picking it into pieces. So in this case, the that title image, we thought of it, um, it, it actually thought of it as text, but the different color transitions were a little hard, so we decided to do a tech, uh, an image for it, or text. Um, some bylines that we had over there, it's a little hard to see on, on the screen. Uh, we see that we had a blurb aspect to it, so we called it kind of like HTML content. Uh, we saw the image, so like, okay, that's, that's a little, another component, and we saw this quote component. Mm -hmm. Um, so you kind of want to pick it apart and see exactly what you have to work with. So using that, we really figured out the data structure. So for example, for the hero image, we have a title image, which is the image that was um, on top of the, the main um, on here. So that one right up there. Uh, and we have a background, which is the background picture of, of uh, Kylie, um, and the byline. So we kind of build out that structure to say, okay, this, um, this uh, hero image has a title. Um, this is mostly for the, for the back end for the uh, WP side um, with the bylines. And then I also added type so we could uh, handle them a different way when we're uh, actually uh, saving them and spitting out the information. Whoops. Same thing for the other ones for profile. Like we had a profile image, we have the image text, I mean the alignment, the code, et cetera, et cetera. This is actually kind of more of a, a I would say it's, it's more of a simplified version of what we have now. Um, so this is how it looks in the admin uh, for now. Uh, we need to get this out fast, so we decided on the admin, let's take it easy, let's just use what um, really WordPress functionality, uh, a little bit of jQuery and get this done. Uh, so for example, on this one, we had different components that you could actually select when you um, start building it. So you hit that add, com um, add component, and then you add it. And then you go ahead and you choose the images, um, and then you add the byline. So this is the title image and the background. And once we have all that data saved and processed, uh, we actually do a whole, uh, I guess, we save the data as it is with, uh, by sanitizing it and then saving it to the one meta field, uh, which actually, uh, Stefan, who's not here, told me, he's like, be careful about it because that's a lot of data, but I minimized exactly what we were saving, so it actually worked out pretty well. Um, and now in localizing um, the front end, so we, we were really debating on if we use, should use the API for this. Um, and a couple things that we saw when we first started working with the API in React was that we did get a little bit of a lag. And localization actually is really a cool way to get prototyping done quick. And it's actually faster, because you're not making two requests. You're making one request for the page. 
Um, and then everything's on the head. So it's, it's pretty cool. So if you can see here, um, actually I should send this out. But uh, we do a check for make sure that the post is singular. Uh, we get that uh, post meta that we saved over here. Um, let me just see. That we save right here. And then we enqueue our uh, React.js um, that we pre process. Um, and then we actually then grab the escape um, meta. Uh, do, and during the escaping, we actually do all the handling for uh, the images, what image sizes we're getting, um, because we use responsive images. So a lot of that stuff is actually handled within the escaping functions. So we didn't have to do a lot of that um, when, we, when we were uh, in the front end. So that, that kind of really helped. Um, as well as escaping out for um, the ad tech, because the ad tech is a particular way that we, we do that and process that has to be handled differently than every other text field or, or image field like that. And then we localize it um, uh, right when uh, the feature post is, is there. So now rendering. I, I kind of just simplified what, how, how the React component uh, app works. So really the, the structure is the feature app, which triggers um, the React app to say, OK, this is the feature. Great. Then it asks for a stack. Uh, and then for each stack, it, it has those components that then hold um, those specific, in, uh, we call them classes, inside of each one. Um, so here, the feature app, of, I kind of just put it in the JSON just because I thought it might be cool. But uh, it initializes the app, and it sends the data to the stack to determine the state. Uh, we're using uh, Redux for the state on that sense. And then we, in the stack, we're using Redux, determines the configuration, and then it sets the state. Um, then the components get called on accordingly, uh, and then rendered, kind of like an iterator, so it knows what classes to call at the time. Uh, and then those classes automatically render the data uh, once they know what they, what they need to do. So uh, rendering uh, this, I, I kind of put the code example on how this works. I kind of wanted to see if uh, I could show it, but that's not really a good view. Let me just see. Let me see if this is any better. Yeah, that might, this might be a little better. So each component that we have, right, um, has that, it starts off with a hero image. So it kind of works backwards, right? So that hero image then actually um, gets, this, it gets its um, classes and styling in here. Uh, and then we actually send the data into this hero image body container. Um, and that hero image body container actually sets that image on the background um, to, to be within its own responsive container that we have. Uh, we're, we're actually using Bootstrap 4.0 uh, beta, or oh, alpha right now. Uh, so it's been really great using Flexbox versus what a lot of people are using. Um, and that's a little bit different. Um, and then within there, we're able to call this hero image, which is a different class, that actually returns us the picture that we're asking. And since we, we, we actually use prop types for this to make sure that we're getting the proper data uh, before actually rendering it. Uh, and these prop types allow us to really uh, make sure that the data is kind of verified on, on the, as they're being outputted. Uh, but I don't, I don't have them on here just to kind of simplify what we were doing. Uh, and then we use a picture component um, that we took apart. Uh, and we use this actually, the picture component, everywhere. So wherever we need it, we actually uh, call it into the class. Um, so within there, we're also calling the title image and the byline. And this is an example of uh, getting the title image and making sure we're returning something if the title image is actually there. Because you could also use this to not show the title image. So if you don't want one, you don't need to have one. So that's, that's actually kind of cool. And then for the byline, since this is, a, um, I guess, a repeating uh, field, we're able to actually use kind of like an iterator to bring back the, these bylines uh, by using these classes. So um, and just, I guess, um, simplifies a little bit more. Well, it may be complicated. But a lot of these classes are actually not inside of the file like they are here. We created a framework to import depending on what we need per component. Because, for example, if we need, as we're importing this picture, um, component here, we could use that everywhere. That picture component then can be used in the profile component that we had with, with Kylie. And I guess let me go back to that real quick. So 
So, so that picture component is being used here, and it's being used up there. So you could think of ways that you actually could use these classes and reuse them to create different layouts or different um, widgets or whatever you might might need. So that's that's a cool part there. Let me go back. So from there, you can start thinking about um, extensibility. Like, how can how can we make more components and really uh, make this feature available for a lot of people to use different in different ways? So the extensibility here is um, things that we've already done. Actually, we created the add component. Uh, we created a block component that is actually a quote. Um, we created a cover component. This is actually a mini uh, single page app, which is actually, I'm going to show, I'm going to demo all these for you as well. Um, we get, that hero image was the one that, was, that I was actually talking about. Um, a blurb one, a post component uh, that is actually a bunch of these put together. So the bylines, the, the headers, the blurbs are all in there, um, as well as the profile one, as you saw. So that one has a quote component as well as, sorry, a quote class as well as a picture class. Uh, and we created a video layout. So uh, that was that was great and on. So people really liked that. But that was really restricting in terms of the CSS and what we wanted to do. So what we decided to actually also add was um, uh, we use fonts.com. Um, we use our API to load the custom fonts all the time. Uh, so we I created a way for them to just enter the key. Uh, so we enqueue the, the the font from there. Um, and then also, if they want a specific thing to happen via CSS, we actually just have the CSS box that renders on top. So you're, they could customize this however they want um, in that sense. Uh, and the next step, really, that we're thinking is um, continuing to extend these components, uh, use the React in, in the admin side, which I think would be really cool and maybe even more extensible, um, even though, you know, Gartenberg's coming out, so maybe. I'll start working on that too. Um, and then thing it, uh, finish the single page apps really within post um, and do a little bit of a cleanup. Um, I kind of want to show you a couple of the, the things that we have done. Um, they're actually kind of really cool. So this is an example of one of the features that we've done. Uh, this, is, this was to introduce the team and who they are. So as you can see here, um, this is actually that hero component with the image uh, inside of it and the byline that get generated there. Um, and, as, and as you scroll down, you see the blurb component. Uh, this is the quote component that we built here. Um, and a lot of actually this um, code is interchangeable. Like, like I mentioned, we created these profiles that we're actually going to use to uh, create profiles on, on artists that are really cool. Um, this is a video component. So this is just kind of like a reiteration of each one introducing the team. Um, this is one of the um, long forms that we did called Digital Dolls, uh, which is really about um, our editor, uh, editorial team on Hello Beautiful and, uh, you know, how they're going through life and, you know, what's, what's new uh, in the black culture. Um, so they're able to do all this stuff with the custom CSS. And a lot of this stuff they've done actually just using uh, using the components and then adjusting the CSS, which has been really cool. Um, this is one of them. This is our most recent um, cover that we did. So Andrew for the win, which is actually a multi-level feature in, in that sense because these all link out to different features, which I'm going to show right here. But as, as you can see, the fonts are very different. Um, This is our August uh, cover. So again, they're using these tools to really do the, the the quote marks and all that fun stuff. This is actually really cool. This is the timeline of um, OJ. This is after he was, you know, released. 
uh, uh, it's a July cover. So as you can see, everything is really a component, but it's kind of being used in a different way. Um, and this is a multi-page page app that we're kind of messing with. It's not really on production yet, but we're thinking about doing it. So the idea would be to like guide and really reload, but right now it kind of slows down. So we really don't like that. We wanted to switch. We have the, the mobile version actually working pretty well. You could actually swipe here uh, and get to the next one, and each one of them actually loads a different story. So that's the missionary, and so on. So this is a really a, a single page app that's, that works via swipe. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of the cool stuff we've been doing. Uh, let me just go back here. Where am I? Yeah, so I guess this is the uh, last thing. So, any questions? Yes, the time is cute. Uh, <laughs> do I have time? Oh, I have 10 minutes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we do have some time for questions. If you have a question, let me bring the mic to you so we can get your question on the video and we'll uh, answer it from there. I was wondering if you could describe a little more about the mechanism by which you're retrieving and storing, saving data from a reaction oh. to work with. Yeah, so let me see if I could maybe show it a little bit better. So the way we're storing the data, I'll look, let me get out of this. So again, the, the admin was really built all on, you know, the WordPress way, like meta boxes and all that stuff. But instead of uh, having to actually create a post, to, a post an, sorry, an individual post meta for each, I arrayed it and made it save in one place. And the way we were able to do that was um, by actually sanitizing uh, this array as it's being saved, which was a little tricky to really figure out, but each type that I sent over it sanitizes a specific way. So the, the text, the number, the URL, uh, color picker, the image, all those stuff. So that's really how we kind of like sanitize that all in, make sure that we use a WP um, uh, key, uh, keys, uh, as well as like the slot data. We kind of knew uh, the information within that was only text um, for the ads. Uh, and then once we get that, we sanitize it, we save it. Uh, and then push it back up to, um, yeah, so we just update the, the post meta there. So it's only in one key. And then on the output, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more on. I can't really zoom in for some reason. So, you know, pinch and squeeze isn't like it. But okay, but um, when we're escaping the, the actual feature meta, since we saved it as particular type, right, um, we're, all, we're also able to escape it the same way. So text, um, we decode it into um, JSON, the number, we make sure it's numeric, and so on, the URL. Um, the images, we actually then use um, we only save the ID for the images when we do the saving, but on the output, we actually do the processing. So we then get uh, a few different sources. So we have, um, I believe we have three sources right now um, going to the front end, and then depending on that, on the size of the screen, we, we render that. Um, so the repeatable text is actually an array map um, uh, stuff as well. Uh, and then this is a custom implementation that we've done for, for ad text. So uh, this is a special class that we use, and then 
really we get our arguments using our legacy add code, uh, and then we output what we need for the front end to make that work. Is that? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess the one thing that I guess I'm not really specifying is that we localize all this data. So this is all on the head. We are not, like, retrieving this uh, via an API right now. Um, so how are you, like, using React on the different pages? Is the whole theme in React, or do you have pieces of each page that are in React? So actually, it, it's just um, it's just that one page. So let me just go back here for for example, right? For for this one, the these pieces get rendered in React. So we're using the localized data to actually spit one out. So this one's for example the cover component. So, I'm sorry, the the hero image. So it just spits one out. Um, but this is totally different than our um, like just regular post content that we have. So like this is regular rendering. So we technically we still have uh, the sorry the JS doesn't get queued because this is a post and the other one's a feature. So that really that really helps. Um, but it's totally independent from the actual thing. If that makes any sense. We good. Hi. Uh, so you're using React. I'm wondering if you're extending React across the various sites. So you're, you know, like basically making React pluggable in any ways, and what your experience. If so, what your experience has been with that? Yeah. So, well, what were we were thinking? Well, it actually, like I like I mentioned before, this is actually the the React um, thing that we really started with. Uh, so we we were thinking mostly like how can we make the stack. Um, extensible or like have different states in a sense, right? Um, and what could involve from that? And that one of them was, for example, um, using creating an app, creating a single page app that we could actually run within a post, right? So I guess I guess to answer that question, we're kind of um, what I've seen is that React is so reusable that every single thing that I that we build here, we kind of reuse inside of the post component. So um, and I, I I really really think it's awesome in that sense. We, I, I've never seen something where I could prototype within, you know, days. Uh, I mean, we got everything shipped out in four weeks, including this thing. So it kind of kind of worked out pretty well. Um, it does help that we had some really strong JavaScript developers and work, WP people working all together at once. Uh, and of course, you know, being in a sprint of that sort can uh, make you do things you don't think you could do. So <laughs> really cool. But yeah, I hope that. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, well, let's give Andre another round of applause. Thank you.